Welcome to the UCL clinical examination video demonstrating how to examine the abdomen. To start off the abdominal examination, you will need to complete wiper. Wash your hands. Introduce yourself with your full name and state your role. Ask for permission to examine the patient. Make sure the patient is adequately exposed and positioned lying flat. Begin the examination by inspecting from the end of the bed. Look around the bed for anything suggestive of abdominal disease. For example, nasogastric tubes, nil by mouth signs, abdominal drains or vomit bowls. Now begin your peripheral inspection with the hands. Look specifically for palmar erythema, nail changes or Dupuytren's contracture. Also assess for a liver flap. To do this, ask the patient to put their hands up as if they were stopping traffic. Now, move up to the face. Ask the patient to pull down one of their eyelids to assess for conjunctival pallor and examine the sclera for evidence of jaundice. Ask the patient to open their mouth to assess their dentition. Look at their tongue for evidence of glossitis. You should also look for any signs of dehydration, angular colitis, or evidence of ulceration. Now move down to the chest. Look at the chest for spider nevi, evidence of gynecomastia, or abnormal distribution of body hair. At this point, make sure the patient is lying flat. Now begin inspection of the abdomen. Look for abnormal distension, scarring, or obvious herniation. Once you have inspected, you should move on to palpation of the abdomen. Before you begin, position yourself by the side of the patient and ensure that your hands are warm. Light palpation of the abdomen is used to assess for any tenderness. Deep palpation of the abdomen is to assess for any masses or enlarged organs. Begin with light palpation of the nine segments of the abdomen. If the patient has pain, begin on the opposite side of the abdomen. Make sure that you are looking at the patient's face throughout to ensure you are not causing undue pain. Once you have palpated all nine segments, repeat the palpation, but this time press more deeply. Examine the abdomen in a systematic fashion, from the left upper quadrant, left lumbar, to left lower quadrant, suprapubic, umbilicus, to epigastrium, the right upper quadrant, right lumbar, right lower quadrant, now move on to palpate the organs of the abdomen, starting with the liver, begin with your fingertips in the right iliac fossa and push gently. Ask the patient to take a deep breath in and out. If you do not feel the liver edge, move your hand further up the abdomen and repeat until you reach the costal margin. When feeling for the liver, you may feel the edge push against your fingertips if the liver is enlarged. Now move on to percussion. To percuss for the liver, Start in the right lower quadrant and percuss up the abdomen towards the costal margin. When you reach the lower border of the liver, the percussion note will become dull. Repeat this process to find the upper border of the liver. Begin percussing in the right chest wall and move downwards towards the abdomen. And again, you will notice dullness when you reach the liver. To palpate the spleen, again begin with your fingertips in the right lower quadrant and ask the patient to breathe in and out. Move diagonally towards the left upper quadrant. If the spleen is enlarged, 
you will feel it pushing against your fingertips. Another technique to palpate the spleen is to roll the patient onto their right hand side. From this position, push your fingertips underneath the left costal margin. If the spleen is enlarged, you may feel its notched edge. To percuss for the spleen, begin in the ninth intercostal space, anterior to the anterior axillary line. Normally, this sound will be tympanic. The kidneys are assessed by balloting. To balot the kidney, place one hand underneath the patient's back and one hand flat on the abdomen. Push upwards with the hand underneath the back and if the kidney is enlarged, you may feel it push against your top hand. If you suspect an enlarged kidney, you should now percuss. An enlarged kidney should be resonant. Now assess for shifting dullness. Percuss from the midline to the flank until the percussion note changes from resonant to dull. Keep your finger here and ask the patient to roll towards you. Then percuss again towards the midline. If the percussion note is now resonant, this may indicate the presence of ascites. At this point in the examination, you should assess for lymphadenopathy. Begin with the patient sitting up and feel for any enlarged rubbery swellings in the submental, submandibular or cervical chain. and the supraclavicular area. Then move on to assess the axilla, ensuring to palpate all of the borders. Finally, examine the patient's groin for inguinal lymph nodes. <coughs> Thank you. You should also ask them to cough to assess for any herniation. Also palpate for the aorta by placing both hands either side of the midline just above the umbilicus. If the aorta is abnormally dilated, you may feel an expansile as well as pulsatile mass. The final part of the examination is auscultation. Place your stethoscope next to the umbilicus and listen for 30 seconds to assess the bowel sounds. Absent bowel sounds may indicate ileus. High-pitched or hyperactive bowel sounds may indicate bowel obstruction. In this position, you may also be able to appreciate arterial bruise of the renal arteries. To complete the abdominal examination, you should examine the external genitalia, perform a digital examination of the rectum, and collect a urine sample for urinalysis. When you have finished the examination, wash your hands, thank the patient, offer to help them redress, and make sure that they are comfortable. <laughs>